From your extensive testing of blood at your clinic, what shows up in the blood from meat and fish? Well, what we see is a snowstorm. And the higher amount of saturated animal fat that a person consumes, the higher the blizzard becomes. And that blizzard impairs the cells. As an example, diabetes, which is growing at a shockingly alarming rate now globally, uh, is caused primarily first, not by sugar, but by fat smothering the healthy red blood cells. And when the red blood cell cannot uptake nutrients and oxygen, the pancreatic function starts to be impaired, and then the sugar starts to elevate blood. What blood sugar means is exactly what it says. You have sugar in the blood versus in the cell where it's used as a fuel. Uh, even the typical vegan diet or vegetarian diet today has abnormal amounts of sugar in it. Uh, even fruits provide abnormal amounts of sugar because of the hybridization over the generations. And that hybridization has been for one purpose, to create sweeter and sweeter fruits, which are certainly more marketable. So we've got to look at the kind of food we eat and how we eat it. But at the end of the day, when you look at a meat eater's uh, blood versus a vegan, it is a shocking difference. You actually can go back historically, which we do in microscopic testing. And historically, you can go back five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 25, and 30 years, and actually see the impairments that it's created on cellular levels in different organs and organ systems and skeletal systems of the body. And the higher amount of meat that a person consumes, and my diet is an example, when I began all of this almost 40 years ago, uh, my diet was primarily a meat and dairy diet. Uh, my family, as most people in North America and Western Europe, didn't favor vegetables and swallowed them down for some incidental reason, probably because it was supposed to be on the plate, always smothered in butter, and it was more like an investigative process for me to find the vegetable smothered in the butter. But it was very easy to find the big, large piece of, of animal sitting on my plate. When I first became a vegetarian and then a vegan, uh, I was actually considered by my family to be potentially mentally disturbed. That's how well ingrained the meat and dairy industry has been in teaching not only your generation and my generation, but my parents and my great-grandparents and grandparents' generation, the importance of consuming this vile matter. Uh, the human body is not built in any way to take this. So the result is that in blood profiles, and we do three forms of testing when people come to Hippocrates, not only the microscopic, which is the most revealing to the point we're asking here, but also a medical blood test, the saturated fat levels, low-density lipids, high-density lipids, cholesterol levels are really, really off. We find that in about 35 to 40 percent of the cases of heavy meat consumers and dairy consumers, and we'll make a point on that in a minute, that they also have liver enzymes and gallbladder enzymes impaired. Now that's a, a very high percentage when you think it's a third or more of the people that not only impair the arterial walls and the organ systems of the body with this excess waste and fat, but now we're actually destroying the liver that filters blood and the gallbladder which filters fat. And that's why today we have gallbladders being extracted like teeth because so many people have eaten this animal food which the human body was never built or capable of consuming and we end up in a circumstance in this situation where the gallbladder just breaks. Well, the liver's breaking now too. And it's estimated uh, in the medical world that about 50% of liver function is normal today for the average Western European or North American.